as a researcher, you are interested in finding out the relationship, the association, maybe causal relationship. And for this, we started with descriptive statistics. In descriptive statistics, we saw that there are two types of statistics, one is univariate and other is bivariate. In univariate analysis, we have seen that there could be measures like central tendency measures, variability measures. We also describe the shape of a distribution by using skewness and kurtosis. And we also have seen how graphically we can represent our distribution. This also describes, so it becomes a descriptive analysis of the distribution. Today we will see about bivariate analysis of our distribution. When your distribution or your sample consists of more than one variables, it is called bivariate. And for that bivariate analysis, bivariate description of your distribution, we can use variety of measures. They can be listed as cross tabulation and contingency tables, graphical representation via scatter plots, quantitative measures of dependence description of conditional distribution. When we are interested in finding out the relationship between two variables, we use coefficient of correlation. It is correlation. The word says relationship, association. It does not say that it is a causal relationship. We must uh, differentiate between these two. In this session, we will see about variety of coefficients like Pearson's R or Spearman's Rho. We will also see the scattergrams or scatter plots to describe the association, the relationship between two variables. We will also see the covariance, how one variable is affected by other variable or the vice versa. This is called covariance. When a researcher is interested to find out what is the relationship between two variables? He or she uses the statistics called coefficient of correlation. For example, if I am interested to know is scholastic achievement dependent on the intelligence? What is the relationship between these two? If intelligence is more, is scholastic achievement is also be more? Or the other way, if intelligence score is less, is achievement is also going to show you the lower scores? Is anxiety and home environment, are they related? In what way are they related? So, these relationship studies is very important for a researcher and this can be used. I mean, when you are interested in finding out this relationship, coefficient of correlation can be used. When we are interested in relationship, we use coefficient. We have seen that. But that is, please understand this is the word relationship. We are not saying that one is cause and other is effect. This relationship is called causal relationship. Coefficient of correlation does not tell us which one is cause and which one is whether it is there is a cause. There need not be a cause, their cause can be something else. So, we are only interested in finding out relationship, not causal relationship. Coefficient of correlation does not tell us the extent of causal relationship. It does not tell us which is a cause and which is a effect. So, for example, we take the same example anxiety and home environment. We are interested to find out whether there is any relationship between anxiety and home environment. Even if you find there is a relationship that says, suppose if it is a positive relationship or a negative relationship, we will see what it is. But then you are saying these two are related, difference in one will also have show you difference in another. It does not tell you that anxiety is a cause of home environment. It also does not tell you if home environment is a cause of creating anxiety. Please understand that this differentiation is very important. Correlation, the relationship between these two variables can be shown graphically by using scatter plots. Let us see some of the visuals here. The scatter plot A is plotted with two variables. See how it is scattered. They are scattered. So, we are not really seeing any relationship. There may be a relationship, but this is weak relationship because the scores are scattered. 
Now, see another visual that is B. It shows you a certain relationship. The scores are arranged in a particular manner. This relationship can be called as strong relationship. Let us see three more examples, visuals of scatter plots. The example C shows you a positive relationship. They are in a particular direction. The scores are scattered in a particular direction. They are nearer to each other. This kind of scatter plot tells you the relation between two variables is positive relationship. If you see visual D, it is exactly opposite it is not scattered to a great extent, they are nearer to each other, but you see a direction, it tells you that the relationship between these two variables is very good, it is strong, but it is negative relationship. Let us see the third one, this again shows you that there is no consistent pattern and that is why we cannot say that there is a positive relationship or a negative relationship, there is a strong relationship, we can say there is a weak relationship or no relationship at all. So, the relationship can be positive, it can be negative or it can be 0 or no relationship. There can be many jokes about 0 relationship. You can find out anything, any relationship between these, any two variables. Now, see the length of the middle finger and the scores achieved in mathematics. Would there be any relationship? If you have mathematically the scores with you, you may find some relationship, but it is near to 0, it would be near to 0 or it will be no relationship. When we say perfect relationship, a strong, very strong relationship, perfect relationship will be coefficient of correlation will be 1. It ranges from 0 to 1, 0 means no relation at all and 1 means perfect relationship. So, you can have on both sides, if you have 1 on right hand side, it is perfect positive relationship. If you have 1 on negative side, that is minus 1, that is also perfect relationship, but it is negatively perfect relationship. Now, for example, if you take two variables, the radius and the circumference, you will find exactly as you go on increasing the radius, the same ratio, you will increase the circumference value that means there is a perfect relationship, it is 1. But in social sciences, we generally do not find perfect relationship. There can be a strong relationship, but finding perfect relationship is very difficult. People may say that science and mathematics are very strongly related. That means the student who is achieving more marks in mathematics may also get more marks in science. But you may not find exactly same relationship that is perfect one relationship even in this. Let us take the same example ahead, the science and mathematics. We said that the student who stands first in science would be first in mathematics also. But that does not mean the student who stands fourth is also standing fourth in mathematics. So, there may not be a perfect relationship. Let us understand this by one example. Here there are three cases, case 1, case 2 and case 3 and we are talking about 5 students in each case. Their scores on variable A and variable B are given here. Let us see that. Student 1 has 68 in variable A and 120 in variable B. Similarly, the scores for every student in case 1, 2 and 3 are given. Now, if you give them the ranks, rank for each variable. In case 1, you will see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 has the same number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And in B also, the same rank is given to the students. So, you see that relationship is 1 to 1. It is very strong and if you go by ranks, it is perfect. In case 2, you will see the first student is standing first in A and the last student is standing first in the variable B. If you see a relationship, it is exactly reverse of the first. This is also a perfect relationship, but it is negative relationship. And if you see a third case, you will see that there is no pattern. Any student is standing first here or getting rank first, getting rank second in any of the variables. So, we do not see any pattern there. So, we can say that there is no relationship or zero relationship or we also can use a weak relationship word for this. Spearman has given us statistics which is called rho, 
R H O and it is denoted as rho. So, this Spearman's rho is computed when we have the ranks, when we do not have the exact score. Sometimes it happens that we do not have exact scores, we have ranks. So, we can use Spearman's rho for showing the relationship between two sets of variables. We use two types of coefficient of correlation, one is by rank and other is by product moment. Product moment correlation is more stronger, uh, we will also see that it is a parametric measure. So, when we cannot use product moment correlation, but we are interested in finding out the relationship, we can use Spearman's row for it. Spearman's row is helpful to us when we have non-parametric scores, they are not distributed normally and in a situation sometimes we cannot really give a score to it. For example, honesty, we cannot really compute honesty as a variable. So, in situations like this, variables when we have such variables, we can think of finding out relationship using Spearman's row. In such situations, we are interested in relative positions. So, who is higher, then who is lower and then who is lower than that? We are not interested exactly in the distance between two ranks. So, we are just giving them ranks, this is not a ratio scale, it can be ordinal scale as well. How to compute rho? It is very easy because we are saying this is a diff rank difference method. We know that on one variable there is one rank, on another variable is another ranking is given. Now, let us see this example where we have two sets. We want to find out inter observer reliability. There are two judges and they are judging the traits in say five, five or different traits are given to them and they are judging it. So, they are giving the ranks. So, for trait A, B, C, D, E, F, the judge 1 is giving the ranks as 3, 2, 5, 1, 6, 4. Whereas, judge 2 is giving the ranks for the same traits as 5, 2, 3, 4, 6, 1. Now, our question is whether there is inter observer reliability, whether the tools which we have prepared are reliable. This can be given by the reliability among the both judges. So, now we have to find out the row for us. What is the relationship between these two markings, these two types of ranks given by the judges? You see the difference between the two ranks. The next column gives you the difference that is denoted by D. So, you can subtract 3 minus 5, 2 minus 2 like this or the other way. You will have negative signs for some scores or positive signs for some scores. There is a check that summation of D must be 0 because we have taken the difference. Now, we square that in order to remove the negative sign, we square it. So, the last column is of D square. So, you find out the summation of D square. Summation of d square is 26. Now, we have a formula rho is equal to 1 minus 6 sigma d square upon n into n square minus 1. We have the value of sigma d square and we know the n. If you substitute the values into the formula, you will get rho is equal to 0.26. Now, this 0.26 is positive, but it is very weak. This is not a strong relationship. So, two judges who are really marking the traits, there is no understanding between these two, there is no relationship between these two. That means, either of the judges have to be removed or you have to rethink about your tools which you have prepared for testing the traits. When we expect the relationship between two variables is linear, we can use product moment correlation and product moment correlation is more stronger and it is denoted by r, small r product moment correlation is given by Pearson. So, we call it Pearson's R and it is expressed in terms of ratio. Ratio means how two variables are related. If you make change in one, what kind of change is expected in other variable and the vice versa is given by this R. This also shows the dependency of one variable on another. How dependent is one on the other is given by this value of the R. In product moment correlation, there is a word called moment. What is the moment? It can be defined as the sum of deviation from the mean raised to some power and divided by n, that is moment. When corresponding deviation in x and y are multiplied together, summed and divided by n, that means you will get summation of x, y upon n, the term is called as product moment. 
So, product moment correlation R that coefficient of correlation which we compute by product moment method is given by a formula R is equal to summation of x upon sigma x multiplied by y upon sigma y divided by n, n is number of scores. Pearson R is used when you have scores which are expressed either in interval scale or ratio scale. It is also used when both the variables are continuous. We use R in many situations. For example, we have seen how to prepare the various tools and for preparing tools we also find out the reliability and validity of the tools. The reliability we use generally the test retest reliability or split half reliability. So, test retest reliability we take scores on one occasion, we give the same test after 15 days. So, you have two sets of scores, now you want to find out the relationship between these two. Here we use R and if the R is very high 0 0.8, 0 0.9 that means your test is reliable. So, a researcher can use R for finding out coefficient for reliability, coefficient of correlation for validity and many other areas where we want to see the relationship between two variables. Now, you have computed R and there is some value R is equal to say 0 0.5 or 0 0.8 or 0 0.26 whatever. You want to determine whether this value is significant or not. This is called significance of R. There are two ways to find out the significance of R. One is finding out coefficient of determination and other is referring to the table of R. Let us see what is coefficient of determination. It is denoted by R square that means the value of R is squared. If you have 0.5 then you have to square it, it will be 0.25 that is called a coefficient of determination. This R squared is a value that ranges from 0 to 1 and is the fraction of the variance in the two variables that is shared. We have two variables and we want to know what is the variance which is shared by both and R square gives you that understanding. Let us take one example, if R square is 0.71, this means 71 percent of the variance in x can be explained by variation in y. Similarly, 71 percent of the variance in y can be explained by variance in x because they are related to each other. More simply, 71 percent of the variance is shared between x and y. Although the coefficient of determination is a good predictor of the strength of the relationship between two variables, it does not predict significance. So, if you are interested in finding out the significance, if you have already set up a null hypothesis and you want to reject that null hypothesis or retain it, then this R square is not that useful, you have to go for another method and that is called referring to the table of R. You have set up a null hypothesis which states that there is no relationship or there is no true relationship between the two variables. Now, you found out that your R value is 0.71. You want to know whether you can reject this null hypothesis of this value or not. Now, for this you must know first of all whether you want to see one tailed analysis or you have to go for two tailed analysis. The probability for one tailed or two tailed, we know that we have to first decide upon this and then we have to refer to the table. For that there is another concept which you must know is called degrees of freedom. Let us see both. The question one tailed or two tailed can be answered. If you know for sure that there would be some kind of relationship which is positive relationship, then it is one tailed. But if you do not know what kind of relationship is there from previous literature, then you are free to say that we do not know what kind of relationship will exist. So, you have to go for two tailed analysis. So, before you go to table R, you have to decide whether it is one tailed or whether it is two tailed. Now, let us come to the concept degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom for one variable is n minus 1. Here you have two sets of variables and you want to see the relationship between these two. So, it cannot be n minus 1, it should be n minus 2. So, if you have 100 people in a class on variable, two variables you are testing them, then you have to see the degrees of freedom n minus 2 that is 100 minus 2 is 98. Let us take one example. 
100 students from varied home environments were tested on anxiety and the product moment correlation was found as R is equal to 0.56. Now, you want to know whether this relationship is significant or not. We have to refer to the table. You can see this table here. Now, see this table. In this table, the first column is degrees of freedom and in the next two columns is given the value for 0 0.05 level and 0 0.01 level. Generally, we use these two levels to reject the null hypothesis. Now, here you will see that there is a value of R given for 90 and 90 degrees of freedom and value is given for 100, but we have degrees of freedom as 98. So, you have to do interpolation for value of 90 and for value of 100, you find out the value of 98. If you do interpolation, you will find the value 0 0.05 level is 0.196 and at 0 0.01 level, it is 0.256. Our value of R is 0.56, which is much above value which is expected by table R. So, we reject the null hypothesis, which stated that there is no relationship. Now, we can definitely say, we can confidently say that there is a relationship. Now, we know that it is positive. The 0.56 value is positive. So, we can say that there is a significant positive relationship between these two variables. Coefficient of correlation is a very important statistics which we use for finding out the relationship between two variables. And we have seen that we can have the scores which are ranked, which are on ordinal scale, but we also have scores which are on interval scale as well as ratio scale. So, for these two different areas, the two different types of scores, we can employ two different uh, statistics. One with the rank, one with the non-parametric, we can use rho and if you have a parametric measure, if you have the scores which are expressed on interval or ratio scale, we can use R. And as I said earlier, to find out R is a more stronger measure of relationship and we can use the table of R, which helps you to reject the null hypothesis more confidently on either on 0 0.05 level or on 0 0.01 level. Thank you.